we're going to focus on uh, specifically on things for uh, grades TK through five. We're going to demo the student account for you. And then we're also going to show you how you can set up your accounts as parents. And your accounts as parents will give you a chance to see in a read only format all of the info that your student will see in their classroom. Okay. This webinar is being recorded and we uh, will be posting the recording of this on the district website. Okay, as well as distributing out some information to all parents via email uh, with materials that we are working on this that we are showing this evening. So let's get started. As I mentioned, Canvas is a learning management platform and I am going to not spend a whole lot of time um, on Google Slides. Instead, we're going to spend the majority of our time demoing and showing you uh, how to navigate the platform. But the link down here in the bottom, what this will give you is this will give you access to the slides and the main portion of the slides that you may be interested in are um, definitions of major terms that are in the system. Okay. So for those of you who are Spanish speakers, we also have this available in Spanish and we will be posting it and distributing it. Okay. Now, um, we're going to I'm about to open up these login pages, okay, and we'll show you how to log in. As questions come up, if you could please use the Q&A section. We will do our best to get to all of them this evening, but as many of you as there are in here, if we don't get to some of them, we will respond in an FAQ. Jana, really quickly, can you go back to the link, please? Sure, absolutely. Um, so Canvas is a learning management system. What makes that different from Seesaw or Google Classroom, which many of your students used last spring during emergency distance learning, is that it is a fully functional learning management system. There are many more features uh, for student organization. It's much easier for students to figure out where resources are, and it is much easier for teachers to communicate via the platform. Also, the other nice thing is that in your parent accounts, rather than just getting a basic email summary once a week, like parents could, could have received from Google, parents can actually log in in real time and see course materials and assignments that students need to complete. Jaina, the link at the bottom, um, I can't read it. So if you can, okay, it's not coming up on my, it's uh, blocked by mine. Okay, hang on. We can fix okay. that. All right. Is that better? Yes. All right. Let me just type it out. Thank you. Okay. Are we good? All right. So where we're going to start is we're going to start by looking at the student view. And I'm going to give you an overview of what your students will be doing. Okay. So this link here is where students will be logging in. You will be receiving this via email from the district directly. And you also 
may be receiving this from your teacher as well. Okay, that this login page, students will use their student ID number that's in queue. And they will use the same password that they used last spring during emergency distance learning. If your student is new to the district, then you will receive your password from either your school or from your teacher. I'm going to log in with mine because my, my, the look of mine on this page is very, very similar. This new dashboard isn't actually part of Canvas. This new dashboard is something called ClassLink. And the purpose of implementing this new dashboard is so that we can provide a one-stop shop for all of our students. Particularly right now when students are having to use online systems from home in order to access their teachers, we thought it was really important that students not have to navigate 10 to 15 different passwords for all of their different systems. So your students are going to see icons that pertain to them. So for example, your students will see a CVUSD Canvas icon. They will also see a Google Apps for Education icon. They could see a Seesaw icon. They may see a Zoom icon or a Q icon, as well as any, um, as well as any applicable textbook links for online textbooks, and even software systems that are specific to your school site. And your student's dashboard in the background will be branded according to your child's school. So for instance, if my child was attending Thousand Oaks High School, or excuse me, if my child was attending Aspen Elementary School, then you would see a Aspen dashboard here, not a CVUSD one. So what I'm gonna do to click, what you do to click on Canvas is your student will click on CVUSD Canvas. Okay. Now, when your student comes in to Canvas, they're going to see their dashboard. And let's talk a little bit about what is on this dashboard. Along the left-hand side, your student is going to have some account forms. Here is where your student can change some notifications. All of these are linked up to your student's Google Learn email addresses. And so they can click on to receive more notifications via email or fewer notifications via email. Okay. They also have what's called a folio. What's nice about this folio is, is that as we start to work with our students over multiple years with this platform, they will be able to save some of their work. Okay. For your students who may need a high contrast user interface, that is an option as well for your child. Now, the dashboard button here is white because this is the page we are currently on. So on the dashboard, your student is going to see one or more class cards. These class cards are these rectangles. If your child is in TK, K, first or second grade this fall, your child will see one class card for sure. Okay. If your child is in third, fourth or fifth grade this fall, your child may see up to five class cards. Okay, the reason for that is to help keep things organized. There's, uh, we are having teachers distribute content across their different subjects. So students will see a homeroom. They will see a reading subject, a writing subject, a math subject, and a science subject for sure. And they may see a social studies subject. 
We're working very hard with our teachers to ensure things are organized and easy for students to navigate, even though they have multiple subjects on their homepage, on their dashboard. On the right hand side, students are going to see a to do list. And what's nice about this to do list is, is that no matter what subject an assignment is created in, it will be in this to do list. So you'll notice that this starts with August 7th. And the reason why August 7th is still here is because this student was just enrolled, quote unquote, this test student in this fourth grade course card so that we could demo this for you this evening. So if your child comes in or if your child has to switch teachers at the trimester or switches between remote and blended learning models, then they'll be able to see anything that they missed right on top. Now below that, what you're seeing is you're seeing some calendar items. Okay? And what these happen to be is these happen to be links to Zoom calls. We're gonna to get to the calendar in just a moment. The other thing that students are going to see in this list chronologically is any assignments that are coming due soon. Okay. Now, if your student wants to close any of them, they can click on the X and it will close it. So if I click on the X, that goes away. Okay. Now, the next one is what's called courses. This gives you a list view of all the courses your student is enrolled in. And they can click on them to open them. Okay, and we're gonna open these in just a moment. Next down this bar is a calendar view. What is really nice about this calendar view is that for your students who have multiple subjects, on their dashboard, all of their work for all of their subjects is going to come up on this calendar. So for instance, today is August 11th, and there are two items on the calendar for August 11th. So as a student, I can click on it and I can see, here's my Zoom meeting, here's my morning Zoom meeting with my teacher and they can click on this to open it and join that meeting. Okay. Up in the calendar, there's different views. If, if the month view is too busy, you could do an agenda view, which would give you a list if that's better for your child. You could also do it by week. Okay. And part of having these options is so that we can kind of customize things for individual children. Now, the next thing down the list is an inbox. Jana, before you get to the inbox, there are several questions about um, the to-do list that you had mentioned. Sure. Um, when they click on the X, um, the assignment will go away. What happens if they accidentally click on the X? How can we get that assignment back? Okay, that assign it doesn't delete the assignment. What clicking on the X does is it just pulls it out of the to-do list. So in order to get to that assignment, all assignments will show on the calendar. Okay. So if for some reason they knew something was there and they accidentally clicked on it, that's okay. Just come down here to the calendar and it will be here. Okay. They'll also be available based on how teachers are organizing their digital classrooms. We're gonna go into the digital classrooms in just a moment, all right? Right now we're just focusing on the organizational things that are available in this left-hand sidebar. While you're on the calendar, can uh, students and parents add things to the calendar? Students can add things to the calendar. 
And up here in the plus sign will allow a student to create a new event on the calendar. So they can give it a title, they can give it a date and a time, a location if they want to, and they can decide, okay, and then this is their calendar. Okay, if they want to click on more options, they can, and it will give them additional options, but this is, you know, th this gets to be a lot for a little one. So I would, I would suggest that students use just that little menu that comes up first. Okay, once students get into fourth and fifth grade, they start to get a little more used to using some of these features that are here. But for students younger than that, it's going to get very busy. Right. How are we on questions on the calendar, Terry? Um, so, but even though you click the X and it went away and you didn't mean to, and you can access it from your calendar, there is no way to add it back to the to-do list, correct? Not that I'm aware of. No. But what I will do is, is I will go back and research that. And then when we do an FAQ, I'll make sure that it's in there regardless. Yes, because with the little ones, they sometimes will get click copy. There yeah. are also several questions while you're paused about getting login information for um, parents as well as students that yes they may have had that longer login information in the spring but they they don't know it now or they forgot it or lost it so when will that be going out um, I would expect that your teachers will be emailing you your login information to remind them of it and so for especially for elementary, teachers will be emailing parents directly using the email addresses for parents that are available in queue. So if you need to update your email address that's in queue, I would suggest that you contact your school main office and discuss that with them. They can help you with that. And do you know, um, when the Canvas accounts for parents and, and students will be up and running so that they can test them out? The student accounts for Canvas technically work now. Okay, I would suggest that you wait until Monday, however, because we are still making some changes to scheduling um, because of all of the differences with scheduling while we're gonna have our cohort learning mode this coming school year. And so I would suggest you wait until Monday. Parent accounts, I'm going to, once students get in, I'm going to show you how you can help your child get a code so that you can create your account yourself as a parent. We're going to do that next, actually. Um, now, in our inbox here on the left side, this is an internal email system. This email system allows your student to email their teacher if they wanna ask questions. It also allows the teacher to email the students or the parents, okay? This is connected to whichever, in the, in the case of students, this is directly connected to students' Google Learn email accounts. For parents, this will be connected to whichever email address you use to set up your parent Canvas account. So what if a teacher emails you via this system, you'll get an email from Canvas with the note from the teacher and you can either log in to respond or you can reply directly to that email. So if my, if my child's teacher emailed me at my Gmail account, I could just reply via Gmail and it would go straight here. Also down here is a help section that has a lot of tutorial videos and things. Um, but this help section is very vast and it can get a little bit overwhelming. So you may want to stick to the help section that we are building on the district website. All right, let's take a look at, um, at what our courses are going to look like. 
when I click on one of my subjects, one of my course cards, what I'm going to see is what my teacher has designated as the home page for my class. Okay. On the right hand side, you'll notice the to do list comes up. This to do list is different than the one that's on the dashboard. The difference here is that this to do list shows only what is for this particular subject. So on the front page, if the to do if the to do list is overwhelming for your child, if they open a subject, they'll see just what's for their reading or just what is for their math. Okay. Also here, they can choose to view the course calendar. It will take them over to their calendar. And the course stream. The course stream is a little bit better than the Google Classroom course stream. It's much more organized, but for some students, it can be overwhelming. So if they get click happy and, and they click on it, it's okay. It's certainly not going to hurt anything, but they may not make a habit of using that. On the left side, you'll see some additional links here. And this is for a kindergarten or first grade class. These are likely the ones that students are going to see on the right hand side. And they may vary a little bit by teacher. But for the most part, we are working with teachers to provide some continuity so that things are as simple as possible for our students. So they're going to see a home button and that gets them to this home page and our elementary teachers are working very hard to um, create home pages that are easy for students. So, for example, if your child logs in and comes to their home page for their Zoom meeting, they can click here to go to Zoom. And then many teachers are organizing things by day of the week or by week. And so for our real young ones, for our K and first grade students, they would click on Monday to access Monday's assignments for the day. So an example, oh, I didn't set that up. I'm my apologies. So what students will see is if they clicked on Monday, they would see a list. And so they may see a page of content that they can click on. And especially at the beginning of the year, the teacher may show them some content of about the teacher. Hello, my name is Dr. Souter. I'll be your teacher this year. Have a picture of the teacher. Um, a lot of our teachers are recording short video messages for their students and, in, and putting them on these pages. And so once a student clicks on the first one, all the student needs to do down here is click on the next button to go to the next one. And so written math work, um, we are going to be sending students home with their, with their workbooks. And so particularly in younger grades, students may have workbooks at home where they're practicing their fine motor skills or they're practicing um, writing their letters or their numbers. In upper grades, they may be, uh, they still may be using their math workbooks because again, it's not always feasible to do everything on the computer. And so when they get to an assignment, they would have a name for the assignment, a due date for the assignment, and then it would explain what the assignment is about and what students are to do. And when students complete that, down at the bottom, they can again click next. And so students are going to have Zoom meetings with their teachers for live direct instruction. And if students, for whatever reason, can't make a Zoom meeting one day, 
those Zoom meetings are going to be recorded. So let me show you what that looks like. Off in this left sidebar, there is going to be a Zoom link for students. So when they click on it, what they're going to see is in upcoming meetings, they will see a list of whatever meetings that the teacher has scheduled with them. Okay. And what they can do is, is, they, is if there's a Zoom button on their home page, they can click on that or they can click the join button to join the Zoom meeting. If your student misses a Zoom meeting, by the end of that school day, the teacher is going to make available the live direct instruction via a cloud recording. And so especially for the younger kids, you may have to help them access that a little bit um, where they can click on cloud recordings and then they'll, you'll see a link to that class session. Now, teachers are not necessarily going to be recording the entire class session, but they will be recording the direct instruction portion that comes from the teacher. The class discussion portions that include other students speaking and other students' faces are not going to be included in these recordings. So to access this recording, you would click on the link and you get two options. One option is to view the video recording, which will show the teacher and if the teacher shared their screen to demonstrate anything. And then there's also an audio only recording. Okay, so all you would do is you would click on it and it will open it and make it available to start playing. Now, these Zoom recordings are not going to last forever. Um, they will last for approximately two weeks. So if your child misses a class or if your child um, needs to go back and review later, then this will be an option for them. All right. Now, in an upper grade classroom, you're probably going to see more links off to the side. You're going to probably see an announcements link, and these are announcements that teachers will push out. You're going to see a modules link. You're going to see a grades link. And so this is where students can come to see how they're performing on their student work. And for our upper grade students, you can from any one of their grades links, they can toggle between their different subjects. So they don't have to go to, they don't have to go all the way back to the dashboard and click around in order to get to their scores on other things. So for instance, here's my written math work assignment. If I had submitted it then, and my teacher had graded it, there would be a score here for me. Now, if you are a family at home that has um, a printer and you want to print off things as you go, you'll be able to print grades here. Can you print the calendar out? Let's take a look. There isn't an embedded print view, but up here in the three dots in your browser, I'm using Chrome. If you use Chrome, you'll have three dots up here. There is a print option. And let's take a look at how it, how it comes out. So it's not perfect, but there is, there is an option to print that. The agenda view of the calendar probably will print much better. There we go, okay. That gives you the agenda view of the calendar is, is a much better option, I think, for printing. Okay, 
Now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how you can help your student create a code so that you can create your parent account. Before we move on to the parent section, are there any other questions that I can answer? Yes, we do have some questions that um, have come up. So if my child in, if I have one child in an elementary and one child in a high school or a middle school, will I be able to access both students from the one parent account or do I have to have separate accounts for both of my students? You will be able to. What you'll need to do is, is that each for each child you have, you'll need to have what's called a join code. And I'm going to show you right now how you can get a join code with your child's account. Okay. If you have trouble getting a join code with your child's account, then your teacher can also provide you one. So at the very beginning, we talked briefly about this account area. What I'm going to do is as a student, I'm going to click on settings in this account area. And one of my options is pair off on the right hand side is pair with observer. Okay, observers are what Canvas calls um, are what is, is the term that Canvas uses for parent accounts because you're observing the class, right? As a parent, you won't be able to submit work with your parent account, but you will be able to see everything your child is supposed to be submitting. So if I click on pair with observer, here is a code that you will use. So you'll wanna write down this code and it is case sensitive. So in this case, you would wanna make sure to use a lowercase r and an uppercase d, a lowercase t, and an uppercase u. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna log out as a student and then we are going to um, practice this. Okay, we're gonna stop there. Okay. Now, on this last page, on this second to last slide in the slide deck that we shared with you, here is a login link, okay? Now, um, early next week, this link is also going to go out via email to all of our parents in our district, okay? But you get, you get to see it early. When I click on this, this is going to take me to the Canvas homepage for parents. If you don't currently have an account, up here it says parent of a Canvas user, click here for an account. So what this is going to ask me to do is this is going to ask me to add in all of my info. I'm going to add in my name, my email address that I want to use for Canvas. I'm going to create a password. I'm going to enter that password one more time. And I'm going to enter that student pairing code that we got out of our student's account. And I'm going to click on start participating. Now to create your parent account, you only have to enter one student pairing, pairing code to get started. All right, let's see here. I apologize. This, um, okay. There we go. Okay. Short little technical difficulties, easy to fix. Start participating. Okay. All right, hold on. I apologize. Hmm. 
you can. I'm going to open that separately. It's because I'm logged into multiple accounts right now. Okay. All right. When you when you go in and create that pairing code, what it's automatically going to do is it's automatically going to log you in to the dashboard. The dashboard is going to show you um, everything for that student that you added the pairing code for. Okay. So you'll notice that the dashboard looks ever looks a little bit different than what you saw from your student. Instead of saying to do, it's going to say coming up. There's also going to be a link to view the calendar. And you're going to have a link directly to view grades. Okay. So this will take you directly to your students grades. Just like your child, you're going to have these other things along the side. You'll have a course list that shows a full list of all the courses that all your students are currently enrolled in. You're going to have a calendar and your calendar is going to show everything for all of your students. So if you have an elementary school student and a high school student, you will see everything on the calendar for both of those students. And again, the inbox, as a parent, you can use this inbox to communicate with your child's teachers. And the teachers can communicate with you. But again, just like with the student inbox, it will send you an email to the email address you use to sign up and it will and you can reply directly from your email program you don't have to log in to reply to a message sent here right up in your account area you have some options you can change your notifications the notifications preferences what this is get doing is this is giving you options for notify me right away to things, send a daily summary, send a weekly summary, or not to send you anything. And so that's what these four icons mean here for you. And so as you go down the list, you can decide what things you want to receive via email. Okay. Now, even if you turn off the notifications for everything because you don't want to receive emails, you can still log in and see all of the different pieces directly. Okay, but this does give you control over how much you want to, how much you want to receive without having to log into your account. And up here at the top, there's a nice checkbox for those of you with multiple children because you can say show name of observed students and notifications. So when you get an email, it will tell you which of your children it applies to. Okay. So if you hover your mouse over these, what it will do is, is it will, t is it will explain to you what these are. So for instance, this course content one is when teachers make changes to pages, to quizzes, or to assignments, you can decide how often you want to get an email about that. What you're seeing here on my screen are what the defaults are set to. Okay. Now, on some of these, some of these may not apply to all of your students. For instance, if you're, if you're, child's teachers are not using online discussion boards, you may not get any notifications at all, not because you turned them off, but because the teacher's not using that particular feature. Okay. And so I, I would encourage you, once your accounts are set up, I would encourage you 
to go through the list of your notifications and take a look and decide what you want to receive emails about, if anything. Okay. Now, in the observing link, this is where you can add additional students. So again, if you have a child that's in fourth grade and a child that's in ninth grade, you only use one pairing code to create your account. And then when you get your second pairing code for your second child, here is where you can add it in. And then down below, it's going to tell you which students you are currently, that you currently have linked to your account. 